Welcome to everyone. So glad you could all join for our first financial literacy webinar. Um, we're thrilled to have Catherine Bates uh, lead this webinar. Um, she is a member of the She Can community. She's a mentor to Anise um, and she's volunteered uh, to lead this. Uh, Catherine has uh, more than 10 years of valuation advisor experience, more than five years of consulting experience. Um, she got her undergrad from UC San Diego, her MBA from NYU, and her Master's of Organization Development from Pepperdine. So she is an excellent resource. We're so happy to have her on here. Thank you, Thank Catherine. You so much. Thank you, Grace. And yeah. I am very, very happy to be here. Um, one of the reasons I love uh, doing this, these types of presentations is um, I'm also part of the, uh, it's called the World of Money and it's a nonprofit organization in New York. And I've been um, volunteering with that organization since 2007, teaching classes like this. So it's been some time. I just absolutely love it. And, you know, financial literacy is something we don't necessarily get, you know, in school. Um, and so, uh, you know, being able to just provide this, this, what I consider very relevant life knowledge, um, to, to young people, it just, it gives me great joy. So definitely glad to be here. Um, and, uh, we can get started. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. There we go. And... Let me know if you can see this. Yes. Okay, perfect. Excellent. And would you, oh no. Hold on one second. I can't see the chat. Oh. It it was Shit. there, but then it went away. So let me let me do yeah. this. Let me see if I can pin it more. I do not know how to pin it. Let's see. I think if I, I'm just going to type something in it, mm -hmm. it should pop up. Mm. Um, okay. I think that works. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So let's get, let's get started here. Um, so this, the webinar that we're doing today is um, budgeting and saving. And work with me here. All right, that's just my bio. We'll skip to that. So here's the here's the agenda for today. And um, you know, we're gonna just talk about what a budget is, really just to kind of ground us all in terms of what that means and talk about all the different details of uh of a budget, in essence, what goes into it. We're gonna have a couple of breakout activities. So we'll do the first one after we talk about the budget in detail where um, Grace will split you into just uh, breakout rooms. And it looks like we can do probably breakout rooms of about three or four people, uh, which would be great. And there are just a couple of questions that um, uh, will be given to you that um, you, know, you can just discuss amongst yourselves. And then we'll come back together and just talk about some of the things we, we talked about in those groups. We'll go through how to create a budget as well, and then move into a second breakout activity related to creating a budget, and then wrap up with some budgeting tools and a question and answer, um, a question and answer session. So um, just before we move on, everybody, I'm assuming everybody is good and comfortable with Zoom since we've been doing so much of it lately, um, but we know how to use the chat function and. And, and things like that. So at any point in time, if you have any questions, put it into the chat. I'm going to keep my eye on it and hopefully it'll pop up when a question comes through. Um, and um, we'll go ahead and, you know, if I can answer it, then I will. And uh, oh, it does work. Thank you. Let's see. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Let me close that and come back to the presentation. Okay, so let's get started. Um, if you can just quickly put into the chat uh, answers to these questions. So who currently has a budget? Um, you know, you can just say, I do. 
And um, if you don't, that's totally fine. Um, for those of you who do, um, I'm just curious how often you might review it. Uh, for example, do you look at your budget every once a week or once a month? Um, and if you don't necessarily have a budget right now, if you could put into the chat um, any questions that you have regarding a budget and or the budget process. So we'll just give that a few, a few seconds. This week, bi-weekly, that'd be good. Two times per semester. So it looks like a lot of you do have um, a budget, which is good. And for those of you who don't, that's, as I said, it's quite all right. We're gonna work on that right now. So what is a budget? Essentially a budget is a detailed written plan on how you wanna spend your money, essentially, right? And it's interesting because, you know, sometimes we don't always talk about it, at least I know growing up, we nece didn't necessarily talk about it, but budgets are really important because in essence, it means you actually can do more with the money that you have. In essence, you have an idea of what's coming in, right? And what's actually going out of that budget. In essence, this brings us to the next slide. Uh, your budget is really based on your income, right? Your expenses and your savings and your income represents really all the cash flows in, right? So sources of income, you know, it could be a part-time job, um, it could be, um, you know, a, a gift or awards, a whole slew of different items. And, but that's really the money that's coming in. Expenses are savings and savings, that's outflow, right? So, you know, expenses, and we'll get into all these, um, these things in a lot more detail, but this is just to kind of ground us all in basically a budget is, how do I balance my inflows, which is your income, with my outflows, the expenses and savings? And ideally, those inflows will be greater or equal to our outflow. And, you know, I can tell you at some point in my life, my budgets were not balanced, where my outflows were bigger and greater than my inflows, but I tried to not let that happen for a variety of, a variety of reasons. So, Let's go through each one of those three um, items in, um, in more detail. So for the budget, or excuse me, for the income, again, these are the inflows. You've got full and part-time work. Sometimes you might have interest income or dividends if you happen to have investments. Um, for this group on the call here, you may have scholarship funds and stipends that you get uh, to come in to purchase things like um, uh, you know, school supplies and books. And there's additional funds that come in uh, with uh, through gifts or awards. Now the expenses here, there are several different types of expenses, fixed, flexible, and discretionary. And we're gonna go into those, each one of those in detail in the next page. So we can really see what the difference is between those three are. And the other second bucket of outflows are savings. And savings are those, you know, is that money that we set aside for like seasonal purchases, like maybe uh, like a winter jacket, right? Or a swimsuit during the summer. Um, Long-term can be something like a retirement account, or if you are planning to go on vacation and, or maybe you wanna buy a car at some point, um, you know, while you're in college or, or after you graduate. And then finally, we've got this thing called emergency funds. And emergency funds are pretty key. Um, I know that this was many, many years ago, but I lost my phone in the back of a taxi cab. So my phone was gone. And then I had to go out and replace that. And that's a, you know, that's a big chunk of money that has to go out of my, um, you know, of my checking account in order to replace that phone. So again, these are some of the details, but we're gonna go in um, uh, another level down. So for the expenses, we talked about fixed. These fixed expenses are really items that don't change from month to month. So these might be things like your rent, your mortgage, um, insurance that you pay monthly, as well as your utilities. And I know for the scholars that are on the phone here, 
some of these or most of these things happen to be taken care of by your room and board, potentially. Um, if there are scholars that actually rent an apartment, then they understand there's that monthly payment of rent that needs to be made and maybe some utilities, utilities as well. But the idea here is that the amount paid typically doesn't change from month to month. The next type of expenses are flexible expenses. And these are items that, that are, are still needed. They're necessary, but they might change slightly uh, month to month based on the need, right? So um, sometimes your groceries, so you know, um, you know, your snacks in your dorm room, um, you know, shampoo and soap and you know, cleaning products through, you know, for the your dorm room and or apartment, those are things that might. Um, those expenses are typically things that you incur every month, but they may be greater or smaller, depending upon what you need. And then there are things like transportation. So for some of you, you might have a Metro card. I live in New York City, so I have that lovely picture of the New York City Metro card. Uh, you might take a bus, right? Um, you may even have a car and there's gas that you're going to be spending money on every, every month. Uh, so those, again, are necessary expenses, but they, they will um, change, very depending upon how much you use. And then the discretionary items, these are the ones that are um, items that you as an individual choose to spend your money on. So these are things like concert tickets, right? Trendy clothes, you got the daily cup of coffee, um, you, other, you have, um, you know, you might go out to dinner um, or out to lunch, you know, or, uh, on the weekend if you're not necessarily on campus. So these are some examples of what discretionary um, expenses are. So I wanna stop there just for a second and ask everybody to take about 20 seconds or so and just put into the chat um, any other expenses that you might think uh, fall into any one of these categories that we haven't necessarily talked about. There's one big one here that's, that is definitely missing. Um, cell phone bills, yep, absolutely. And where do cell phone bills probably fall? What kind of expenses might those be? They can be fixed. Flexible, yeah, that's right. Sometimes they're fixed because we have a plan, right? And then sometimes they may be flexible depending on whether or not we go over on our data and or some people actually have, um, you know, you fill up your, um, um, you fill up your plan as you go, right? So some months you may put like $25 on your plan, maybe the next month you put 20, uh, 50 for whatever reason. So those can be really, those can actually be flexible and, and fixed. Yes, so mine changes, yeah, exactly, it all depends. I know when I go traveling internationally, I get a little supplemental plan that allows me to make phone calls internationally, and so my, my cell phone bill for that, you know, that month is usually higher by, by that rate. So this is great. Anything, any other type of expenses that aren't here that pop up for you? Utility bill, mm -hmm. and that too can be flexible for sure. You've got both, um, you know, sometimes what is it in the summer, if you live in some place that's super, super hot and humid, you know you have that AC cranking all the time for sure, for absolute sure. Medical expenses, absolutely, absolutely. Where might medical expenses actually fall? fall? Could be flexible, uh-huh. And then um, Chan, Chamnang, I apologize, so I got, I hope I got the name right. Um, put in the chat taxes. So taxes absolutely can be expenses that have to be paid for, for absolute sure, for absolute sure. Um, Rhea, yes, fix if it's regular medication. Yep, I have a couple of medications that, I, that, are, that are regular for me and those are fixed. Subscription fees, yep, absolutely, absolutely. These are really, really good. There's a whole slew of them that, that we have to think about, right, when we, when we actually go through that budgeting process. 
All right, I'm gonna move us to the next slide. This next slide will talk about um, savings and savings are actually a form of discretionary spend. The first one we have here are seasonal purchases. And we talked uh, briefly about that, right? So if you're living in you know, the East Coast, you might have to get that winter jacket so you don't freeze. Um, swimsuits for the summer, birthday gifts, right? These are items that um, you know, come up once or twice a year, depending on how many gifts you get for your friends. There's also holiday gifts, right, that come up. So these are seasonal items that you might wanna consider putting money away for so you have it ready to go when that event actually occurs. The next one here is long-term. And this is money set aside to be set, spent sometime in the future. So we talked about like buying a car, right? Um, buying a car while you're in school or after you graduate, taking that fabulous vacation, um, and then also retirement. Um, the 401k is a typical retirement um, fund that you get when you join most, um, most large employers. Uh, they provide this benefit, this benefit for you. And these are things that are really important, right? Especially when you, um, especially when you're young now, saving up for, for retirement is awesome because you have so much time ahead of you. Um, and so it's much easier to save uh, now than it is when um, you, get, you get older. So it's important stuff. And then this last bucket, this is the emergency fund that we talked about as well. This is money set aside for those unplanned expenses. So you got a busted cell phone, you're gonna have to get that replaced. Um, you know, I've had my bike stolen. It's unfortunate people do it, but then you gotta get your, you know, you gotta get your bike replaced. And then we've also got expenses, you know, say you've got a toothache, right? And you know, toothaches can be very, very painful. And so those are something that you want to get fixed, you know, right away. And there's usually a, a decent amount of money that can be associated with that. Um, and so it's important, right, to think about all these different, different factors when we're putting um, a budget, a budget together. Um, so are there any other types of maybe seasonal purchases or long-term or long-term um, uh, potential spends that you could have or something or any other emergency type situations that you might want to consider? And you can go ahead and put those in the chat. Yeah, it looks like we had a question from Chamnan. Are okay. discretionary expenses in savings because it's longer than six months? That's a that's a really good question. Um, savings are part of discretionary expenses because it's it's a choice that you get to make. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to do with the time of of saving the money. It's more about, it's a choice you get to make. Um, you can choose not to save, and that's completely your choice, or you can choose to save. And so it's really up to the, it's up to the individual, but again, it's because there's a choice involved with savings for, um, in most instances. So that's why it's called, it's part of the discretionary. Does that, is that helpful? Yeah, looks like, ooh. Yeah, We've there are got, a couple of other more questions yeah. here. Mm -hmm. All right, you're welcome, Chamnan. Um, there's investments. So investments, these are also, would be considered long-term types of, um, of savings. Now, I'm no financial advisor. I did work in finance for a really long time, but investments are things that, um, they come in many different types of, many different forms, right? You can actually, you know, invest in a 401k with an employer. So that's an investment. You can actually open up a brokerage account if you want to buy and sell stocks. Um, that is not, it, it could be savings, but depending upon how the market performs, right? You can Sure, save a lot if the market goes up, but you can also lose a lot. 
um, if the market goes down. And if you, if we all remember what the markets did a month and a half ago, two months in terms of that, those sharp dips, a lot of people's investment accounts, retirement accounts really took, took a pretty significant, a uh, pretty significant hit there. So, um, uh, investments are a lot, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a quasi type of, I would say savings, but it's not a true, true savings account where you just put money into a bank account and let it stay there. Um, is that hopeful? Hopefully that answers the question. Um, and then there's another question here is life insurance a long term life insurance is is insurance in that, um, and again, I'm not, I have to say this again, I'm not a financial professional, but um, it is, um, you do make payments into and for a life insurance policy, those payments are typically fixed. So in the, in the context of thinking about how you would budget, you would want to budget for those fixed payments. Um, so, you know, ultimately a life insurance policy is, um, I think typically paid out, you know, if something, you know, gosh forbid anything happens to you, but it's paid out. So those who are left behind can take care of various, um, uh, financial responsibilities, um, that usually pop up when someone, um, you know, passes away. So, um, it's not a type of savings per se, but in terms of the budgeting, it would be a fixed, likely a fixed expense that you would want to consider um, in your budget. Does that answer that question? Awesome, great, thank you. All right, before we move into the next breakout session, um, we're, hopefully this goes great. We're going to talk about needs and wants. And these are really, this is a critical kind of concept, I would say, to really understand because it helps, it helps you make decisions about how you might want to spend your money. So for example, needs are most often associated with fixed and flexible expenses, right? So we talked about the rents, we talked about utilities, cell phone bills, groceries, transportation. These are things you need to survive, in essence, day to day, right? Wants are primarily associated with more of the discretionary expenses outside of say, um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. So, you know, do I want to go to a concert? Sure, I do want to go to a concert. Um, and so, you know, I can choose to spend my, I can choose to spend my money on that. Um, the way that you, you can think about needs and wants too is that, for example, I actually need a car. So I live in the Bay Area and I need a car to get to certain client sites um, that I visit for work. Now I moved back to California about three years ago and um, I was able to use my mom's car. So my mom's car is 20 years old, older than some people on this call. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's an old car. The paint's crusty on the top of the car. Um, it's, you know, it's not the nicest car, but it gets me from point A to point B. Do I want a new car? Absolutely, yes. I want a fancy new car. Do I need a fancy new car? Not necessarily because I have my mom's car that actually works. And when I think about different expenses that I have to pay, one big one for me are school loans. So I've got school loans that take up a sizable chunk of my income. So if I want to kind of manage my budget and be sure that I can put money aside for some of the seasonal purchases, you know, for some of the long-term types of, um, uh, you know, savings um, and an emergency fund, I can't take on a car payment for a new car. So do I want a new car? Absolutely. Do I need a new car? Not so much. So my choice now is to not buy the car, a new car, so I can manage my budget a little bit better. Does that make sense? Okay. So, all right, now we're gonna move into 
Well, let me see, before we go on, does anybody have any questions on these needs and wants? I can't see if anything's popping up in the chat. I'm going to assume no. I'll go back and check when we break out into the groups. So we're gonna go and break out into the groups and I know I need to do something right now. Ooh. Hi, is... sorry, my internet just died, but I'm back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop oh. sharing. Oh, well, I'm gonna stop sharing, make you the host, Perfect. and then reshare. So I'm gonna Perfect. stop sharing. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna do what you told me to do. Perfect. Manage participants. Going to you and all right. All right, I just made you the host. Excellent. Okay. okay. And yes, 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 yes. I'm going to show the questions one more time. I'm going to go back and share my screen. Great. Okay. Okay, good. So these are just some questions that um, I invite you to discuss when you're in your groups of three or four. So what sources of income do you currently have? What expenses do you currently pay? And what other income expenses or savings items do you think you should be considering that you hadn't considered before? And the idea here is to just to get you thinking about all the different little elements that go into a budget um, not necessarily discussing the actual amounts of your income or expenses, unless you want to share that, but that's not necessarily required for this discussion. Um, so here are the questions. I'm going to leave them up. I don't know if they stay here when they get sent out into the, when they get grouped together. Um, but essentially, it, your sort, what are your sources of income? What expenses do you have? And what other income expense or saving items do you need to consider that you hadn't considered before? And then we'll break out for, we'll do five minutes right now. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and Grace okay. is gonna work her magic. Yeah, and Catherine, I will probably just move you out of one room. In a okay, moment. that's fine. Okay, Let's see. Okay, cool. All right, is everybody back? Yes, I think so. Okay, yes. excellent, excellent, excellent. So for this bit, we're just going to um, just talk real briefly about what some of the groups shared. So I will just open it up. We can do a popcorn style if anybody wants to jump in and just talk a little bit about a little bit about what their group shared. That would be lovely. Just make sure you unmute yourself. Yeah, I can go first. Um, our group, Jai uh, Yas and Mai and me, was talking about um, the um, expense that we haven't considered before, like medical expenses, like dental work, which we don't usually like save up for. So that's the new things that we have in common as well. Awesome. Thank you. My group was talking about sources of income and expense, and one common income is, I mean, among three of us, is the income from job on campus, but two of them cannot have it anymore, so me is still working from home. And the expense is mostly personal care products, and the scholarship mostly cover everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hello, for my group, Terry and I, uh, are we talking the same thing about source of income, expand, and what we expect to spend on the, uh, during this, this year, but we haven't done that before. So as a result, like, uh, she have job, I have funding from school and we spend for like room utility, uh, utility and mm -hmm. food in common, yes. And also we may have buy or pay for like gift or 
maybe extra clothes or stuff when you go back to the state. That's that's all. Yes. No, thank you for sharing. Um, that actually, you know, it raises an interesting question. You know, we're all of us are are in places we probably didn't anticipate we would be in at this point in time. So I'm curious um, if anybody's willing to share some expenses that they're paying now that they wouldn't be paying when they're in school or expenses that they used to pay in school that they're not paying now because they're in a different in a different place i can just jump in with a quick thing my um car like paying for gasoline that's gone way down yeah those mm -hmm. past couple months and then when i did fill have to fill it up like when i eventually got down to empty gas is so cheap now it was even less expensive mm -hmm. that's actually a good point i'm still on the same tank of gas that i think i filled up about a month ago now yeah, yeah. don't have to drive anywhere anybody else for me before the quarantine um, i didn't have the net oh was I interrupting someone? Go ahead, Ria. Okay. So before the quarantine, I didn't have Netflix subs subscription. I just watched YouTube because it's free. But then <laughs> now I have subscription for everything. Uh, you have a subscription for everything? <laughs> yeah. Netflix, Hulu, Spotify. Almost everything now. Are you going to miss those if, you, if when you go back to school? Uh, probably yes and probably no because there will be a lot of work when school is like in proper setting. Yeah. I think there was someone, thank you for sharing that. I think there was another person. Yeah, Chamnan. Hi, Chamnan. I was just uh, going to say about uh, food when I was on campus. I like mostly don't pay anything on um, food because I have uh, like usually go to the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. And now, like, I'm not on campus, so there are, like, some expenses that uh, occur on food. Oh, yeah. My food expenses have actually gone up because I'm eating more at home now. A lot of the clients that I work for have, or the last client that I work for, they have free food for lunches <laughs> for all their you know, all their employees and all the all the, uh, the consultants that work there. And so, and there was always food left over from lunch. So I'd bring stuff home. So now that is definitely gone. And so my, my food expenses have gone up considerably. I'm the opposite, Catherine. I used to eat out at lunch every day at work and now I'm we're having all our meals at home. So it's- Got it. Saving it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how this works. All right, anybody else before we move on? No, okay, excellent, thank you. So now we're gonna move into how to actually create a budget. And um, there are kind of three main things that you can do for this. And the first one is setting goals. And this is really determining, okay, what are my short-term financial goals and what are my long-term financial goals? So what are those expenses that I have to cover, right? Um, you know, month to month, um, uh, you know, like um, the expenses we were talking about, like, like food, um, you know, some food, your cell phone bill, um, you know, some groceries, things like that. And then some of those longer term goals um, that, you might be thinking thinking about right so going back to um you know getting a, a new winter coat uh before the the winter the winter kicks in um the next one is creating a budget so once you've kind of got your goals down then you have to say okay well what is now my income how much am i bringing in through the work that i'm doing and any other sources my stipends um my uh the scholarship funds and things like that so figuring out what's coming in all those expenses 
um, that are going out. And then all the money that I have to set aside to save for some of those longer term types of um, types of items. And then on a regular basis, which a lot of you already do, some more weekly, bi-weekly, you know, a few times a semester, determine whether or not your income, you know, um, your income is greater, let's see, if your expenses, excuse me, are greater than your income. And if it, that's a yes, then you can go back to your discretionary costs, um, those, those costs that you choose uh, to spend your money on and determine what those can be, um, what, which ones can actually be cut. And then you can adjust as necessary. Sometimes you get a new job and you might be making a little bit more money. So then your income then goes up. And then what does that mean? If I make, you know, 20 more dollars or 50 more dollars a week, where do I then put that money? Do I need to, do I want to increase my savings or do I want to spend more on clothes? It all depends on, on what you decide to do. Um, sometimes the expenses that you've budgeted are actually lower than what you've expected and you can make those adjustments. And then sometimes there are expenses that you didn't account for originally that you should consider. Someone mentioned early some medical expenses that I had, you know, that she hadn't thought about. Maybe those are some things that she needs to work into her budget going, uh, going forward. And we're gonna kind of see some of this in action. So here's setting goals, and I talked a little bit about this. These are the, you've got your immediate goals. This is the money you use today. Again, phone bill, groceries, transportation, daily coffee, et cetera. And then those long-term goals, um, seasonal long-term and emergency funds. For example, in four months, I wanna buy a winter coat for $100. How much should I save each month? Well, 100 divided by four is $25 each month. That is now my budget of all the money that I bring in, 25 I need to set aside for that coat that I wanna buy in four months. All right. So here's what creating a budget, number two, might look like. So we've got um, an example uh, budget for a scholar. And on the left-hand side, here's the income, part-time work about 545 and stipends on books about 60 and Grace and I kind of talked through these numbers so hopefully these are these are meaningful to everybody that's on the on the call so this is the income side and then on the other side these are all the different types of expenses that you might have again phone bill groceries entertainment that's going out um, you know, Netflix, maybe a gym membership, transportation, subscriptions, savings, and an emergency fund. And right now you can see this, this budget is actually balanced. You have $605 coming in for income, $605 going out in expenses. Um, in terms of actually putting this together, how might you figure out the amounts to put in the budget? So for example, how might you determine how much you wanna spend on groceries? Or how would you determine how much you wanna spend on subscriptions? And you can, if you want, go ahead and just unmute your line and provide your answer, or go ahead and put it in the chat, it's up to you. Looking at previous payments, mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, I normally like, for example, if I want to cut grocery or add grocery, I look at like, what is the average I normally, normally pay in the past three months if I go through a grocery shopping one per week, and then I adjust a budget that way. And how do you capture that information? Like what, what specifically are you looking at? Receipt. And the receipts. Okay. Yeah. And is that a paper receipt or do you look at like a bank statement or do you keep like a ledger or, or something that you write down? I normally look at the receipts because it's more detailed. The bank statement, they only say like, well, they give the total amount, but then if you wanna go more detail, like what, which one you wanna cut and stuff like that, I, um, I might, I mean, I prefer go to the receipt. Yeah, okay, cool. 
Uh, someone here is asking, could I repeat the question? Yes, so the question is, if we look at these items for income and expenses, how might you come up with an estimate of how much to include in the budget? So, so there's a response here. Um, Sangam, calculate the income, is that times percentage of what you should spend? You want to talk a little bit more about that? Wait, um, I'm still not sure about the question, but do you ask about how much we should spend on the grocery given this data? How much do you, so how much would you estimate for yourself? So for example, this is just an example. So the groceries here are 175. I just kind of, you know, made that up talking with, with uh, Grace, but for you, that might be too much or it might be too little. So how would you go about deciding what the right amount of money you should spend on groceries should be? Um, I've, I've heard about the 50, 30, 20 rules. So I think grocery is, um, is neat. So then I think it has to be less than half of um, the income, am I right? I, you know what, the 50, 20, 30 rule is new to me. I learn something new every day. Oh, really? Yes. I've seen or it maybe a I've few times. Okay. I've seen it a few times on the internet, but I'm not sure if it's the like default calculation that people use. Okay. Yeah. I will, I'm going to make a little note about that and just go, go look that up. Um, I so, wonder if that has something to do with like, I know some people use a thumb for like rent expense, you know, like rent or mortgage people. Yeah. And I don't know, I, again, I don't know where this comes from, but I've heard people talk about, you know, no more than say 30% mm -hmm. of what you bring in um, every month. But I mean, it really, it really all depends right on, mm -hmm. on the individual. Um, you know, for sure, but um, I've made, made a note of that so I can go, I can go look it up when we're done here. Um, Rhea mentioned, write down the exact expense like a subscription fee and estimate the flexible expense and adjust it later until it's balanced. Oh, Rhea, you want to talk a little bit more about that? That would be helpful. Like, usually there are, like, the fixed expenses, for example, their subscription for Netflix or other subscription, it has like the exact fee that we can mm -hmm. check in advance. So I would say like write those fixed expenses down and then mm -hmm. estimate the rest that can be flexible and then try to adjust it and estimate it over time until the point where it's balanced. Mm -hmm. Great, no, really helpful. I, I actually follow that, that, um, that rule. I kind of, you know, I make sure I know what all my, those fixed expenses are. So like for your, the Netflix, ex, you know, subscription, I know what that is every month. I just put that in and then I kind of look at, okay, well, what's left over, right? And then what can I do with that? If there's anything left over, you know, fingers crossed that there is. Um, excellent. Okay. So this is how you create a budget. So it's taking in some information that you do know, right? Um, we talk about looking at actual receipts to get some of that information. Um, and then, um, especially with some of those flexible, like fle the flexible expenses, um, understanding what, you know, how much do I actually spend on, you know, actually spend on groceries. Um, I typically look at an, an average of all the money that I spent, um, you know, over say, I, like a month to say, what's this average look like? And usually that's how I, how I go ahead and estimate that, um, the uh, the amount for say say groceries. So there's many different ways you can you can you can definitely do this. Um, there's also I understand for some of you there's some additional money that may come in on the income side uh, through the scholarship funds and gifts and awards. So if those are also part of what your inflows would be, you would include them uh, above the line to include in your in your balance balancing the budget exercise. 
All right. So here's the next step is once you've got your budget done, then you get to go and say, okay, what did I actually spend? So if we take a look at what was, or what was actually my actual inflows and income was and what my actual expenses were. So the grayed, the slightly grayed out um, uh, columns are the actual income that was brought in and the actual expenses that went out. And you can see, based on the um, information here, our income was where we thought it would be at 605, but our expenses seem to be a little bit higher. Um, and there are a couple of areas that we can take a look to. Groceries, we budgeted 175, but those came in at 200. Entertainment, going out to eat, um, uh, you know, having fun with your friends, we budgeted 115, that came in at 200. And then for our emergency fund, we didn't really have really anything left over to, to actually put in to that emergency fund. So when we look at our balance, we're actually negative 60 in this particular example. So the question I have, and you can put this in the chat or come off of um, uh, mute, is how might you spend more than you actually um, earn or bring in? What, what, what are those instances where you actually spend more and how might you actually do that? For me, I mm -hmm. spend more on grocery is because I'm a foodie. <laughs> so, I pay a lot of money on food, but I don't really pay much of like entertainment or anything. Subscription, I don't really pay on those. Okay. So it's kind of like I balance it out. I spend more on grocery, but then I cut other expenses. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So you might spend more on food, but it sounds like you spend less in other in other areas. Yes. Yeah. Like I pay for for phone bill, I pay like less than forty bucks. Okay. Well, I need to find your plan because that is not my plan. It's like I spend way too much. But the downside, you have less data. True. 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 So those are choices. You just you just started talking about choices that you made. You like to spend more on food, and you're willing to spend less on your phone bill, right? You get less data, but you get more food. And more food is more, it sounds like it's pretty important to you if you're fooding. So it's a really good example of where, where you think about, where one can think about making certain choices, for sure. Yeah, and sometimes you lose track when, you know, or you, you overspend if you aren't necessarily taking, um, uh, you know, keeping track of, of where the money is, is going um, or taking your expenses down, you know. And some of you, I'm not sure if some of you actually have credit cards right now, um, but credit cards are also, this will be a, a topic for another, another webinar, but credit cards are one way that we can kind of spend outside of our means. Um, credit cards are definitely beneficial, but there are definitely some things that we have to think about when we do use those credit cards. So those are one, that's another way that we can potentially, potentially overspend because we eventually have to pay the, uh, the bank back that's given us the credit card. Okay. Anybody else with any other thoughts on this particular budget or balancing this budget? Oh, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, 
Young. Um, we were definitely going to get to that. I absolutely use Excel as well. Uh, she said, I use Excel to track my income and expenses. Highly recommended. I do that. I do that too. Excellent. Okay, we've got one more break. Oh, wait a second. Are we at time? We Grace. are, but if oh. anyone can stay a little later, yeah, feel free. But I know we are at the hour. I went through this so much more quickly when I practiced it earlier. Uh -oh. I know. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> If people do have time, there's one section that I think would be helpful to go through, if that's possible. Um, yeah. I'm going to move yeah, through this one and go to the budgeting tools. Um, I think it's a probably a good, a good segue to, to, to wrap up here. So here are some of the budgeting tools that you can use to create your own, your own budget. And um, I do use an Excel spreadsheet and I will take a look at my bank statements to find out what, um, where I spent my money. And I just keep a running tally basically of, of what I'm, you know, what my income is, what comes in and then what goes out. But that's me. I, I like to use the spreadsheet, especially coming from finance. I feel very comfortable with Excel. Um, there are also online budget tools through your bank. Um, so I have my accounts at Citibank and when I log on online, there are actually budgeting tools that they have within that, that website. And then there are a bunch of different budgeting apps. Um, these are ones that I literally put in a quick search for on the internet, um, you know, in Google. And this is what I got. So the I don't know much about these other than that these are like the top um, apps for Nerd Wallet. I will say that I have used Mint before and it was helpful, um, I found, but you need to connect your um, bank accounts and savings accounts, um, all the ones that you have to the app. And sometimes those links didn't work this was a while ago so they may have improved the technology now but because the links kept breaking i just decided not to use mint anymore um, i don't know much about all the others but these i wanted to just put here so you had some idea of different apps that you that you could use um, i'm curious if there's anybody on the call that does use any one of these these budgeting apps i'd be curious to hear a little bit more about how you found them to be if, if you'd actually like it. I never use it, but I used to discuss in class with a bunch of my classmates that they use some of this. And they said sometimes they track your data and sometimes it's in, inaccurate for some reason and they limit some of the function. So I'm, it was a long time ago, I sort of forgot about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's a very, it's a very, it's a very good question. Um, you know, is it that that question is, is it safe to put your, you know, banking info in, in such apps? Um, ideally, you read the, the, the privacy policies to understand how your data is actually, you know, being used. Um, so I think it's a, A, you need to do your research right, to figure out whether or not these apps are right for you. And you need to do your research around understanding what the, um, uh, what the privacy policies are uh, for each one um, to really understand what they're, what they're actually doing with your, with your data. Um, I did find, when it worked, I found the Mint app to be very helpful because it was really easy to see what I was spending in the different types of expense categories, which is really, important for me. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't understand where all my money was going with respect to food and groceries. Uh, living in New York City, you don't typically cook a whole lot, right? At home, you go out quite a bit. And after using Mint for several months, I realized I was just spending way too much money going mm -hmm. out. So it allowed me to kind of say, oh, okay, that's a lot of money you're spending, Catherine. Um, do you really need to go out as much as you are, especially given some of the other financial goals that I had at the time? And so I was able to um, 
uh, you know, reduce my spending going out, but um, I found it to be helpful. But again, it, it, I have since stopped using it. Um, but I would encourage all of you just to investigate and do some research to see if it, it actually makes sense for you. I still use Clarity Money occasionally. I, I still hooked up to it. And I think what's helpful is, in addition to what you said, Catherine, about being able to see what categories you're spending, you can also see what percentage of your income you're spending, mm -hmm. you know, every month or, and how much you spent, are spending this week versus what you spent last week. It, it's a good way to sort of, without pulling out the Excel spreadsheet, mm -hmm. get a sense of, of where you're spending your money. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. And, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up here now, but I want, before I do, are there any questions that you still have that have not been answered? Go ahead and put those in the, in the chat. Cause I really want to make sure that, you know, if there was a specific question that you had coming into the session, um, you were really eager to get an answer on. Um, I'd like to see if I can answer that for you. If it hasn't already been answered. And if all your budgeting questions have been answered, then my job is done. Um, I think I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah, like, how do you keep making budgets every month? How do you make sure that, okay, so I did a budget this month, but how about next month? Like, sometimes maybe you're going through things and you forget to do budget, even if you did the previous. So how do you make sure that you're doing it constantly? Mm -hmm. That's a very, that's a very good question. Absolutely. Um, so I think it depends on, um, I, it, it will all depend on what, when you find yourself doing um, what, you, what, there's a couple ways, right? You can put a reminder in your calendar, if that is something that you look at, that helps you to think about like, oh, that's right. So on Sunday morning, after I wake up, you know, and I have breakfast and I go to the gym or you do whatever that, you know, ritual is you have for Sunday morning, I'm gonna spend just, you know, 15, 30 minutes just reviewing my budget um, to make sure that I'm on track, I don't have to make any adjustments and, and I'm good. So you can potentially put that in your calendar if, if that helps, um, you know, every two weeks. If that's not something that that works for you, because we, we are all different for sure, um, think about what you need to, to get something done. So for example, um, you might even partner or, or you know, talk to your, one of your really close friends to say, look, I really wanna look and review my budget every two weeks or every month, whatever that frequency is. And I would love for you to help remind me right to to do that so i'm going to put it on my calendar and i would love it if i can add you to that calendar so you can hopefully you know help remind me that that is something that i that i'd love to do or that i need to do and i want to do um oftentimes i find doing things in you know with somebody else um or with other people and not that your friend's going to sit right next to you and go through your the budgeting exercise but that person is there to help remind you that this is something you need to do um that might be that also might be helpful um for those of you who do do this weekly or bi-weekly what do you do to remind yourself to look through um and review your budget i know some of you um seem to do that fairly frequently Um, I can go. Um, I don't have reminder, but every time I spend, I tend to want to know like what is my like state of finance like so mm -hmm. that I go to look at it. Sometimes I look at it too much, like a few times a week. <laughs> yeah, keeps me on track. So that's something for for you. You like to know. You're like, ooh, I just spent this. What did it do? Where am I? You know, do I have do I have enough? Okay, I've got set a reminder. 
Anybody else have anything to, to, to add with respect to how to remind someone to, to actually do the budget? For me, mm -hmm. um, spending on grocery is the only one thing that I really need to watch out for. So I'm a little bit old fashioned. Mm -hmm. So I sometimes take out the cash <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is the only money that I can use today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that is, that's actually, that is a way to, to actually budget. Um, one of these, I think it's pocket guard. It, they do it virtually, but the idea is, is that you set aside a certain amount for say groceries, right? And you're like, I have $150 worth of groceries in this like envelope and that's all that I get to spend. And then you just use that. And so you physically have it, right? To say, oh, okay, I've got 150, all right, I'm gonna do 20 here, you know, 30 there, whatever that amount is but you know that I only have 150 to spend on groceries. And once it's gone, it's gone for this month or it's gone for, you know, whatever period of time you, you set yourself up for. Um, so that is, that's definitely another way, another way to do it for sure. I've got um, another one here, I think from Ria, say checking my bank statement online because it, you, you can see your savings going down and indirectly reminds me not to spend so much. Mm -hmm. I do that too. I tend to go on my, online and just kind of check, check my spending every, every so often because I, I just get curious. So I hope that's been, that's been helpful um, as several suggestions in terms of reminding, reminding you to do, to do the budget. Are there any other questions that have not been answered that you would like to ask? I do not see any more coming through. Um, Grace, if, if I'm, totally open to receiving questions outside of this awesome. forum for Great. you know on budgeting so feel free to um you can share my um email address with um with all the scholars that's totally Fantastic. helpful Fantastic. great yeah. thank you catherine thank you're you welcome. so much Kathleen. you're very very welcome i hope this was helpful i really do really hope this is. was helpful and again if you have any other questions um grace will have my contact info so yeah, I'll share your email and then I'll also send out um, a copy of the presentation and a recording Perfect. of this call. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Really, really Thank you, awesome. Catherine. You're welcome. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'll Thank do another you. one. I don't know when, but we'll do another one on, on, yeah. on credit. I think that's, that's another topic. There were a couple of topics kind of on the list that we're, we'll work through at some point. So I'll definitely yeah. keep, uh, keep in touch with y'all. Excellent. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Catherine. You're very Thank welcome. You. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you Bye. so much.